On September 6, 1967, Natalie Renee McIntyre was born. Macy Gray is an American R&B and soul singer-songwriter, musician, record producer, and actress who goes by the stage name Macy Gray. Her distinctive raspy voice and Billie Holiday-influenced singing style makes her stand out. Gray has 10 studio albums to her name and has been nominated for five Grammy Awards. She has appeared in a number of films, including Training Day, Spider-Man, Scary Movie 3, Lack of Want to the Blues, Idlewild, for Colored Girls, and The Paper Boy. Macy Gray is a 54-year-old new soul singer and single mother of three children and is a Grammy Award-winning singer. Macy Gray was a college student from Canton, Ohio, who wrote songs in a friend's dorm room studio. Then during a performance, she was discovered by an executive at Atlanta Records, and she became an overnight sensation with her own record deal. Gray's album went triple platinum and earned her five Grammy nominations after her breakthrough hit, I Try, reached number one on the Billboard charts in 2000. She took home the award for best female pop vocal performance. It would be great if you like and shared this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon next to it to get notified when we add new interesting videos in the future. Now let's get back to the story. Crazy is one of the more favorable nicknames given to Macy Gray, but as she tells Brian Boyd, she is fighting back. Natalie McIntyre is her real name. There is a real Macy Gray out there, an elderly man in Ohio, but Natalie McIntyre knows nothing about him except that she crashed from her bike outside of his house and spotted his name on his mailbox when she looked up. I just thought, I'm taking his name, and I've used it as an alter ego ever since, she added. There was discussion of litigation and all that, but Macy Gray the female waved her hand dismissively. You can't sue over a name, that was all just talk. It's the sort of thing that happens when you get famous, among other things. She was a child prodigy who began reading at the age of three, studied to be a screenwriter, and went to Los Angeles from Ohio at the age of 17 to work as a script reader for Universal Pictures. A then boyfriend asked her to record a guide vocal on a demo tape for someone else. Someone at Atlanta Records heard the audio and signed her as a long-term priority. Atlantic requested a rock album, and Macy Gray delivered a soul album. Shortly after, her marriage fell apart, and Atlantic called to inform her that her record would not be released and that she would be dropped. She returned to Ohio, divorced, unemployed, and with three children, where she got on her bike, fell off, and spotted a mailbox labeled Macy Gray. Someone at Sony heard her original guide voice demo and urged her to get back into the studio, which is how the music industry works. The outcome was On How Life Is, which had the stratospheric hit I Try, which racked up massive global sales. One of the first things she did after receiving her royalty checks was to purchase her debut record from Atlantic and store it in a vault. Gray specializes in profoundly emotional three-minute love stories, blending the lyrical sassiness and forthrightness of Mary J. Blige with the strum and drang vocal exposition of Janis Joplin. I think it's the stories in the song that does it, she admits. I could always walk my way into or out of anything. I've been writing since I was a little kid. I've always been very personal with the stories, always about love and relationships and stuff. She professes to be more intense partner in any relationship with song names like Give Me All Your Lovin' or I Will Kill You. If you look through all my lyrics, you'll see that it's always the case, as in real life, that I've given more than I should have given to somebody and this is something I only ever learn after the fact. Her second album, The ID, in 2001, was a challenging work that mixed Freudian notions with funk and German marching music. It did not duplicate her debut's economic success, but Gray believes that this new one is better album because it was very hard to make. I did not know shit with the first album, and with the second one I was just having a blast. And a few rage tantrums. But with this, I feel like there is a really cheerful mood to the music, even if it is a melancholic album. When I recorded it, it had a lot going on in my life, and it's strange how there may be happiness even in a sad song. Sly Sone used to do that a lot. But I still feel that I don't fit in as a rock star or whatever, she says. One of these days, I'm going to get myself cloned so I can hang out with myself and get to know me better. She has over 20 years of professional experience in the music industry, 
as well as a distinct raspy voice and a creative singing style that she blends into her songs. Over the course of her career, many of her hit songs have reached the top of the Billboard charts, and she is far from done. While her professional career has slowed in recent years, fans will be able to hear her voice once again at the important event of the NBA All-Star Game in 2022, which will be aired all over the globe. As a result of the attention, many people are now wondering if the singer is ill, and they are displaying a heightened level of concern for her well-being. Macy Gray was diagnosed with bipolar disorder several years ago, and she has been struggling with the illness ever since. She is an enthusiastic supporter of both psychological well-being and an appropriate diet. Gray, as someone who has suffered personally, is constantly open to new ideas and opinions on any element of psychological well-being and sickness. Even before she began her professional career, Macy was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. She has been afflicted with the condition for more than two decades. Bipolar disorder is characterized by extreme mood swings that cause major emotional highs and lows. Macy Gray is still sick as she continues on her path to bipolar disorder. The artist has been through some trying psychological times in her life and her condition has not helped. Gray's disease causes her to endure mood swings between ecstatic and depressive states on a regular basis. She has not, however, let her health difficulties take over her life and she remains engaged in the music industry. Macy Gray's ex-husband and her have three children together. Gray and Hines were married for two years in 1996, however the marriage did not last much longer since the couple later separated and divorced. She has three children named Anisha, Mel, and Happy. Macy Gray, like many other artists with leisure during the COVID pandemic, experimented with a variety of activities from cooking to creating her own toilet paper company, which failed quickly. However, as a singer-songwriter, Gray finally found her way back to making music. She is releasing a new album, The Reset, on an unspecified date. The album is appropriately titled Macy Gray and the California Jet Club. It's her first as an independent artist and her first as the official head of a band. With the singles, the dramatic and striking Undone and Thinking of You, Vintage Gray with a Torch Song feel, she has provided a few glimpses of the new album and the new band. When Gray was asked about the new song, the meals she learned to prepare during her musical hiatus, the life-changing advice she received from Prince during an extraordinary two and a half hour meeting, and meeting Oprah and Elton John, and more, Macy Gray replied. When it first happened, everybody said to take time off. I was like, oh, you mean I don't have to go anywhere? I can't go anywhere? That's great news. So that was cool, but then got a little old. And it was like, you could go on vacation because everything was shut down. So yeah, I got busy. I got into things and I started doing a whole bunch of stuff. Macy Gray is out with a new track, Thinking of You. And while it was not inspired by the COVID-19 pandemic, it does make reference to this new form of reality that we are all living. That was such a difficult time, the 53-year-old remarked of the pandemic, which began last year and has now spread into 2022. I believe you will hear references to that in everyone's music. According to Macy, the ballad, which is languid groove and old school flavor, is a love song at its core. Alternatively, thinking of you makes you want to have some sex, get some alcohol in your system, she proposes. Macy seemed to be underestimating herself because in the midst of it all, she found time for activism and philanthropy. While the world was engulfed in protests and riots in response to a series of police shootings of unarmed Americans, specifically African Americans, the musician was working behind the scenes to provide emotional and financial support to their families. Her vehicle was My Good and Nonprofit, she founded in 2018, but just launched last summer. We support families who have lost loved ones as a result of police brutality, Macy explains. A lot of individuals do not consider the repercussions. You get caught up in the politics, the marching, and who was right and who was wrong. Behind the scenes, however, there is a mother and a father as well as sisters and brothers who have lost someone abruptly and cruelly and they are in pain. Macy's willingness to roll up her sleeves and assist a mourning relative in navigating health insurance to connect with a therapist reflects a lady who believes society needs to communicate more freely about mental health. You are socialized to hide it, explains the singer. It is nothing to be embarrassed about. It is only a thing. Your brain is not working on a temporary basis. When it comes to treatment and self-care, Macy concedes that while both sadness and mania are debilitating, therapy is critical. It is really important to try to sort yourself out, she adds of therapy. 
At the very least, you can understand what you're going through because if you understand it, you might be able to adjust and do better. For the time being, Macy is focusing her efforts on returning to work and promoting her next album, The Reset. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to share the video. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you again, and we'll see you in the next one.